From the very beginning, we have always sought to reach out to one another, and storytellers found a new form for personal expression. Wondrous new tools will help us learn to bridge the gaps between us. Good morning, nerds. I am Cheyenne. My friends call me as, and I cannot stop talking about Disney World. Welcome to the LARP house. Kind of. It's getting close to the holiday season, and so I hopped on a couple of planes for 11 hours. One of the planes was leaking, and to keep myself from imagining the plane ripping apart in mid-air, I watched a couple of movies, one of which made me cry in front of strangers, which inspired me to make this video. <laughs> Today I'm gonna start to go over movies that inspire literally everything I do because I like to fixate. These inspire my whole aesthetic, from prop and costume creation, to my visual art, to storytelling and character creation, just so much of my life comes from these movies. I went to art schools pretty much all my life since age 13. In my higher arts education, college level, I focused a lot on sequential art, so things like storyboarding, comic books, illustration for books, and of course, animation, which just justified my lifelong obsession with underrated animated film, so <laughs> get ready. <laughs> there are gonna be some weird choices among, among the lists today. So number five, because we were doing a countdown, is gonna be a film called Mirror Mask. Experience an unforgettable journey through a world filled with magic, fantastic creatures, and illusion. Mirror Mask. It's very much an Alice in Wonderland slash Neverending Story type adventure, but the unique visuals give it a really wonderful twist on the traditional magical alternate dreamland trope. I actually discovered this movie because I was obsessively researching any story that was similar to the Neverending Story in a way because I liked to fixate, and I immediately fell in love with this. The color palette, the costume and creature design, and the friendship magic come together to make this really twisted and odd yet wholesome style that's kind of permeated everything I love ever since. <laughs> Number four, Hook. Let's fly! Oh my god, where are we going? To Never Never Land. Where? in my opinion, is the best screen adaption of a Peter Pan story that exists. And I know it's not the original, it's more of a sequel, but I feel like it captures the spirit of the original play better than any screen adaption of the original play that I've seen. Dustin Hoffman's Captain Hook and Robin Williams's Peter Pan are absolutely iconic, but even more than that, the way that Neverland and Peter Pan function, I feel is more true to the original intent of the book, and it makes for a really interesting modern fey and magical fey island legend, if that makes sense. Like, it could be argued that Neverland is a direct analog for Avalon, or... Ternanog? Ternanog. Some words I only know by reading them, okay? And I can't pronounce them all right off the bat, so bear with me. As a side note, one of my favorite Peter Pan stories literally takes Neverland and makes it Avalon. It is called The Child Thief by Brom, and it's the dark retelling of Peter Pan that we've all always wanted secretly in our darkest of hearts. Number three is 1973's Fantastic Planet. Oh, look, Father. A female omen and her baby. Do you suppose she's dead? I think so, Tiva. And the baby. We can't leave him here like this. May I keep him, Father? I'll take good care of him. Very well, Tiva. We can't let the poor animal die. This is one of the most wonderful pieces of animation that I saw when I was a very young child, at least as far as animation as an art form goes. I would definitely say this is more of an artistic film than a narrative film, although the story is creepy and compelling. The animation is just... Sometimes I still see the faces of the aliens when I close my eyes at night. And as an adult, I have a morbid fascination with every film that ever scarred me as a child. Looking at you, Watership Down. Anyway, this film is beautiful. It's alien and I just, I want to say it's like 
the animated film version of Bjork. Like, I feel like she could have made this, but it was in the 70s. Maybe this is what summoned her to Earth. Number two is Ladyhawk. Matthew Broderick, a pickpocket who thought that anything was better than prison. Little did he know what he'd escaped from wasn't half as strange or frightening as what he'd stumbled into. This one is an underrated classic, and Michelle Pfeiffer has never done anything wrong in her entire life, okay? The pig lady's pledge to act cool, to look cool, and to be cool, till death do us part. <clears throat> okay, this movie's got an impossible love story, a satisfying revenge plot, an affable dad friend, people turning into animals, and medieval Ferris Bueller. The truth is, I talk to God all the time. And no offense, but he never mentioned you. It's got the whole package. It's such an integral part of the fantasy stories that I was raised on, our mom even named our childhood cat Isabeau. And it probably drives my need for most of my role-playing characters to be cursed in some way. <laughs> Number one, I saved the truly heavy hitter for last. The Labyrinth. Everything I've done, I've done for you. I move the stars with no one. The world of Labyrinth. Of course, the labyrinth. Like, of course. Have you ever met me or any LARPer? We love that crap, but not entirely for the reason you think. I saw the labyrinth at a very young and impressionable age, and believe it or not, I was already a fan of everything that Brian Froud had done. Brian Froud is the artist that designed all of the creatures and a lot of the general look of the labyrinth. And Brian Froud's fairy books were basically my childhood Bibles. Also, I think Alan Lee worked on those books, if I'm remembering correctly. I don't remember names of things very well. <laughs> so if I do more of these videos, you will probably eventually see every single thing that Brian Froud has done in the film world because I don't know how else to describe this, but I went through every single one of his fairy books as a kid and copied the illustrations as a sort of weird obsessive art practice. <laughs> I like to fixate, okay? Everything I have ever loved about a fairy character, I have loved because it emulates Brian Froud's style in some way. That is, of course, until Guillermo del Toro came along onto my radar, and now they share joint custody with me. <laughs> and before anyone can say I'm neglecting David Bowie, just listen, listen, listen. One of the most innovative forces in modern entertainment, David Bowie. <laughs> Jareth and his Goblin City slash Labyrinth is another really fascinating modern interpretation of the Fae and Magical Fae Island trope. And you better believe that every single Fae character I have ever made draws from either Jareth or Peter Pan or both. My first LARP character, Petra, Petra, Peter, Peter Pan, she was, she was, she was Peter Pan. <laughs> And the character that I'm playing very soon, the Changeling Queen at Felbus Magic's Conterra. A goblin bay. <laughs> that is directly inspired by Jareth the Goblin King. I'm living my best life. I'm gonna live my dream. <laughs> Speaking of which, you really should check out Conterra and Felbus Magic's other projects, links for which will be in the description. They really are doing this whole immersive experience organization thing right. Like, like they're actually paying us for our work that we will do for them. Uh, and, and the design document is just... I'm so excited. I'll link to all of it in the description. Please check it out. Charisse, bless you. So that is five of the long list of movies that created me. Five movies that help inspire every single artistic thing that I do. So if you want to see more like this and dive further into the very weird inspiration behind a lot of my artistic choices, Give this video a like or something, let me know somehow that you want to see more. Because my list is so much longer than five movies because I've had a lifetime to fixate! <laughs> I'm also gonna start a new thing that I saw in other YouTube channels and I absolutely loved it. Alternating with picking a featured LARPer of an episode, I'm going to be asking you guys a question that I will want you to answer in the comments. This community is full of so many people with wildly interesting lives and tastes in art, so I want to know more about you guys. So my question for this video is, 
what is the weirdest movie that you fell in love with as a child? You can answer in the comments and I will read my favorites in the next video. And that's all I have for you this episode, nerds. Thank you so much for watching. You are loved and cherished. And if you have any questions, comments, or emotional outbursts, if you want to support us in any way, links for all that will be in the description of this video. And as always, thank you so much for liking us, subscribing to us, and creating with us. If anyone was wondering why I'm dressed like a witch over Thanksgiving weekend, it's because while I love excuses to come see my family and to be grateful for things, this holiday is a national cover-up for genocide and it is a farce. Yeah. <sighs>